guys, Taylor here, your backstage beautician, and today's hairstyles are inspired by the new movie Mamma Mia 2! Mamma Mia! Mamma Mia is coming out today, July 20th, and I am so excited! I am definitely gonna go see it this weekend as soon as possible. I know this is technically a movie, not a musical, but there's a musical like the movie, so I thought it'd be an okay crossover. And anyway, who doesn't want some fun beachy curls that you can wear all summer long? And we're to the premiere of the movie. Hey! And if you stick around to the end of today's video, there's a surprise hairstyle. I'm also going to do the hairstyle she wears in her wedding in the end of the first movie. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I did was spray some sea salt spray onto my wet hair. I prefer the Not Your Mother's Beach Babe Soft Wave Sea Salt Spray. And this tropical banana scent is super nice. So spray that liberally all over your hair, and then blow dry. This should give a little extra grit and hold to your hair. The middle part was alive and well in 1979 when most of the second movie takes place, so if you want to stick true to the hairstyles, I would maybe go for middle part here. Then I'm going to put just a little bit of gel throughout my hair to give it some additional hold. I prefer the Garnier Fructis Curl Scrunch Controlling Gel. It's a really soft gel, it won't make your hair super crunchy. And spray anywhere from a nickel to a quarter size dollop in your hand. Depends on how thick your hair is for how much you'll need. And then work this throughout your hair. I can already feel my hands are sticky from the gel. That's what we want. I'm gonna brush through my hair to make sure the product is evenly distributed. And then we're gonna start curling our hair. We're gonna start curling our hair in sections. So clip the top half out of the way. Or if you have thicker hair like mine, you can even clip the top two thirds out of the way. And then we're gonna start curling. Now I'm going to use a three quarter inch curling iron. You can even go a little smaller if your hair doesn't hold waves very well. And what we're going to do is rotate between using the clip and having a clipless wave. So first curl, I'm gonna use the clip. And second curl, I'm going to use my curling iron like a wand without the clip. Then I'm going to go comb through the ringlet with my fingers to make it relax a little bit. And now you can see we have two different textures going on in our hair here. While a curl created with a wand with no clip like this is probably more accurate to the movie, we're going to be manipulating and playing with our hair a lot to give it the texture you see in the movie. So having a variety of curls with the clip and curls without the clip will make sure that your hair and the curl holds up at the end when we're done playing with it and putting product in. I'm also rotating directions as we go to make the hair look a little more natural, like it's naturally curly. So I curl one section away from my face with the clip, one section away from my face without the clip, brush through the ringlet with my fingers to get it to relax, and then repeat curling in the other direction. You can see I'm taking pretty small sections of hair, less than half a serving size of a box of pasta. This is because our curling iron is a lot smaller, so the smaller the curling iron, the less hair we can put on it at one time. As you're wrapping your hair around the curling iron like it's a wand, you might see a small amount of twisting in the section as you're wrapping it around the curling iron. You want this to happen. Don't worry about trying to make your hair lay flat as you're using the curling iron as a wand. This bunching and twisting is going to make the hair curl in a more natural way. I'm taking my smallest sections yet here on the top since this is the hair that you're going to see the most and the hair you'll probably pull at and work with the most. Oh my god, there's a spider. I hate spiders, but they do such good things I don't want to hurt them. You know what, we'll just let him do his thing. At least it's only a little jumping spider. Lately I've had a lot of those long-legged, big hairy ones up here. Little jumping spiders I'm okay with. Those ones are like, kinda cute, but the big hairy ones, mm -mm, not in my house. Since your hair has a lot of product in it at this point, it's probably gonna get pretty kinky and tangly a lot faster, so make sure to brush it up before you curl it so you're not frying knots into your hair. Not good for it. Can I just say that moment in the first movie when they're tap dancing with flippers is probably one of my favorite tap dancing numbers of all time. Tapping flippers, like genius. Oh God, he's crawling closer. <sighs> there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Uh, okay, uh, ooh. Oh God, I don't have anything to kill him with. Uh, nothing like a book. Oh, he sees me coming. Sorry, buddy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I didn't get him the first time. R.I.P. little buddy. Now the rest of this video, I'm going to be so paranoid. 
All right, we got our curls, we survived the spiders, now it's time to style this hair. So to give my hair that wet, just been in the ocean kind of look, but without the crunch, we're going to use oil. Today I'm going to use the L'Oreal Paris El Vive. The L'Oreal Paris El, El Vive Extraordinary Oil with Camellia and Sunflower Oils. Wow, that's a lot of words I can't say very well, but it looks like this. Generously put a couple pumps in your hand. I'm gonna work it between my hands and then run it through the ends of my hair, avoiding the roots. I'm also gonna scrunch as I go to prevent pulling the curls out as much as possible. This oil also smells really nice. I want a little more. There we go, now we're getting the wet look. You'll have to use quite a bit to get the look you want, but you can stop whenever you think you've put enough in your hair. It's totally up to you. All right, once you've added enough oil to your hair and it looks the way you like, you're starting to get that wet, beachy look. I'm gonna go back to my gel and add just a tiny bit to the ends. And by a tiny bit, I mean a lot, because more is more. So then for my final trick, we're going to take some hair putty by our roots. I'm using the Garnier Fructis Surfer Hair Power Putty. This is going for the windblown surfer look, according to the packaging, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. The packaging recommends taking about a dime-sized amount. I take about a nickel. Work this through your hands, and then flip your hair over, working this at the roots for volume and lift. All right, and there you have it. I think I'm definitely going to wear these curls when I go see the movie this weekend. If you even want to get into the hairstyle that young Donna wears in the second movie, you could pull the front half back with the clip, like this, pull some pieces down, and presto. Yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna wear this one when I go see the movie this weekend. Oh, I'm so excited. If you want your hair a little more undone, like in the first movie, you can choose to skip a lot of the clip curls and do just the wave and it'll be a lot more relaxed and loose. Surprise, you made it to the end of the video. So now we're going to do Sophie's hairstyle from her wedding at the end of the first movie. Then whichever side you have more hair, we're going to take a section of hair from underneath for the braided headband portion. So I have more hair on the left side of my head. So I'm gonna pick up my fringe and underneath right above my ear, I'm going to take a section of hair and this is going to be our braided headband. Now you want to make this section as thick as possible because Sophie has quite a thick braid in the movie. I'm suspicious it's not even her real hair, it's just a headband. But you also don't want to take so much hair that it's visible when we'll twist these front sections back. And then braid normally, just a regular three strand braid. If your hair isn't long enough to have a braid that goes from one ear to the other, you can always take sections of hair above your ears on both sides, braid them and have them meet in the middle. I'm going to fluff out the braid to give it more volume. Then put a clear elastic on the end. All right, then we're going to take our braid and flip it over to create our headband. And then we're going to pin it into place. So take your fringe on the other side and lift it out of the way and pin the ends of the braid right underneath above your ear. Then we're going to twist the front sections of our hair back. So I'm going to start with a section on the right side of my head. So taking the hair right here in front, we're going to twist it back behind where the braid is laying. And as you go, you're going to add the rest of the hair from in front of the ear as you twist. Once I've added all of the hair from in front of my ear, I'm going to twist down a little bit further, then push the twist up a bit to give it some more volume, and pin it into place on the back side of the twist. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So take the hair in front by your part, Twist it behind the braid, and then slowly add more hair as you move downwards. Keep twisting and adding hair until you've added all of the hair in front of your ears. Then twist down several more inches, push the twist up to give it some volume, and pin it into place. All right, and once you're happy with the way your two twists look, we're going to add two flowers behind our left twist here, just like Sophie has in the movie. So in the movie, Sophie has big white organza flowers, or at least they look like that. Um, but I wanted to use fresh flowers for my garden, so I'm going to use these big black-eyed Susans. So cut the flower off about an inch below the stem, place it just here at the top and back of the twist, and pin into place. 
Now there are two different methods I like to use to pin flowers into my hair. You can either take the stem and put a bobby pin on the stem and then pin that into your hair, or you can place the flower in your hair and then use a bobby pin to catch the hair around it and the stem. So you could try both ways, see what works best for you. Then take your second flower and put it on the back of the twist right below your first flower. And here we are, here's our hairstyle that Sophie wears in her wedding at the end of the first Mamma Mia. That's all I have for you guys today. If you get a chance to try out this hairstyle for the Mamma Mia movie premiere or anything like it, please feel free to tag me in the picture on Instagram at the Backstage Beautician because I would really love to see you guys try this one out. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, break a leg and enjoy Mamma Mia too! <laughs>